In today's episode of Willful, we spoke with Heather Koshis, an internationally acclaimed artist whose wood assemblages of buildings make us rethink our past and present. Hi Heather, thank you so much for joining us today at the Merchant Tavern. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> so you started out your career as a printmaker, but I understand that one night you were in your studio and you broke apart a piece of wood and made this discovery. Can you tell us about that moment and what happened? Well, it was definitely late at night in my studio. I had been working for a few hours. I was preparing for a show. I was painting and drawing like mixed media of um, images of um, downtown Kitchener. I knew that I was interested in textures and colors and I was just going with what resonated with me. And I did have a piece of weathered wood that was in my studio and I wasn't intending to use it for anything except for using it as a backdrop of an easel, like a support board, like put my paper oh, on top yeah. and just, you know, draw on the paper. It was like nine o'clock at night and uh, this piece of weathered wood, it was about two by three and it was literally lying side by side by a four by six photograph of a an old alleyway and I noticed it was a very uh, geometric composition. Um, I noticed the texture of the brick in the photograph was very similar to this piece of weathered wood in my studio and that's when I realized that I could get what I envisioned better if I used wood instead of paint or ink. I sliced it, you know, physically sliced it and I, and I just ripped it apart with my hands so that I released the inner layer and I saw the texture. Like it was very immediate. Mm. Like it was, you know, not too much thinking, um, just idea, do it. I don't remember what happened <laughs> after that, but I remember the feeling. I remember the feeling because it was, it was exciting. It was, uh, I really liked the physicality of using my hands. I liked, it was just really exciting. I needed to think outside the box. I needed to, I wanted to create something different. Mm -hmm. And so I really have no rules with this medium. And uh, like no one can tell me if I'm doing it right or wrong. And yeah. uh, that's very liberating. We met 10 years ago at a Toronto art show. I was immediately drawn to your booth and your multi-dimensional structures. And I remember at the time we struck up a conversation about Jane Jacobs. What role has her urban activism played in your art? It's really interesting because sometimes you think that you're just work, you just, sometimes you just don't know what you're doing sometimes, you know, and you just keep going and you want to quantify it and you want to somehow put reason to it. But sometimes you, you don't have the words and until you, you just have to grow older and wiser <laughs> to yeah. do it, you know? <laughs> like to really have something that means something. You just have to keep on doing it to evolve. Right. And one of her quotes, Jane Jacobs, you know, I had it on my website for a while in my, on my earlier, in my earlier days and, um, something to the effect of, uh, you know, one day these people will look back on the ruins of the life we made, the essence of the life we made. And for me, that, pull, like, because my, my first body of work was about these, these buildings and how they're not recognized because they're not celebrated buildings but they are the essence of our community and they resonate with us. And then people, and then they get torn down because of the development, economic evolvement, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And we lose that uh, feeling, our connection. So anyways, her work and her words helped validate what I was trying to do. Right. Can you describe your process of art making for us and how does a piece become? 